Greetings, fellow conquerors, and welcome back to Byzantium here in EU4, where everything is going splendid, and we are just kicking... No, not kicking the crap out of, but defeating the Middle Eastern coalition that has formed against us, one of whom will be significantly weaker by the end of this war. Unfortunately, it's not going to be the Mamluks, but that's perfectly fine with me. Now, I, I am kind of scared of the Castilians deciding that, hey, you know who would be great to attack? Friggin' Byzantium, that's who. So, let's take a look at the Castilian army. Let's see how, how much should we actually worry. Well, first of all, Castile has 415 development, not including Aragon, who is another 240. That's like 650 development. Um, Castile's army is currently 50,000, 53,000, and, uh... Naturally, they're going to take defensive ideas to stack with their disgusting 15% base morale of armies. So, um, really disturbing stuff there. <laughs> uh, of course, all the major powers decided to do well this game. But hey, these things happen. Looks like the uh, Mamluks are going in for an easy stack wipe here in uh, Erzincan. Uh, and he, ooh, ooh, if they can reinforce, the Mamluks are taking a minus three crossing there, and it looks like our armies are going to reinforce in time. Ooh, that's brutal. Uh, but we're going to siege in the meantime. Yeah, the Austrians got that. Mamluks are having a bad time with that negative three. That's just brutal. Ooh. I wouldn't be feeling too good after that kind of fight. <laughs> Eh, let's let it, let the guy stay home. It appears that Alexios the Seventh is now just and take, gives minus two unrest to the whole country. Check that out. That is awesome. Burgundy, first of all, is still alive, allegedly. He didn't. The inheritance didn't fire, but France has taken most of his land anyway. He's having religious civil disorder. He's not having a good day. Send uh, send some get well cards to you, Burgundy, because he's gonna need them. Looks like most of the people in uh, the coalition are feeling having pretty low uh, <laughs> enthusiasm here. All right, we won the siege of uh, Halab or Halab. Let's go crush this uh, Mamlukian stack here. Maybe we can get the stack wipe. Ooh, Leon Basilios. One of our advisors, uh, or Leon Basilios, Basilius, <laughs> whatever, has published the crowning achievement of his literary career, The Spirit of Laws. This monumental work has been celebrated for three of its numerous theories. The classification of governments, the influence on politics, and the most important one, the theory of the separation of powers. So this is our level three advisor uh, doing his thing. And uh, we could say his efforts will be admired throughout the nation. We get one stability, and for, let's see, six years, we get uh, cheaper administrative tech costs. So we could save an additional, like, oh, I don't know, like 6% or 10%. So we'd save, like, another 60 points on administrative tech costs for the next uh, 10 years, which would make it like, extremely cheap to get our mil our next uh, admin tech um, if we wanted to get to 13. However, we are still, we would still be five years ahead of time, and... Um, yeah, I don't, I don't really see that working out well. However, we could also, uh, take 50 prestige. Oh, oh, either way we get the, uh, administrative tech cost reduction. Well, in that case, let's go with the stability. No, no, sorry. Let's go with the prestige, because we're at 60, and having 100 is going to really boost our morale even more to even higher than 4.1. Uh, so yeah, let's go for it. Let's get, uh, 50 prestige administrative tech costs. Nice. That's, uh, Le yep. Leon Basilios. The, uh, the mighty statesman. Wrote about the separation of powers and such. What a hero. During wartime, too. During wartime. Very impressed. Alright, uh, we could probably think, start thinking about a legit peace deal here. I don't... I don't think I want to take Konya, since it's, uh... Actually, Konya's not that developed. Um, let's see. I think we talked before... Karman was at 67 development, so 67, 14, be like 81, so he could get like another 
fairly cheap province here. We could give Kayseri here to him. And not feel bad about it. And then Karaman is not only... He's, he's cut off. He's losing his alliance with the Ottomans. Um, he'd give us quite a bit of money as well. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, maybe not as much as we would think, though. We'd have to wait for quite the peace deal in order to get that amount of money. But, I mean, I think this is a pretty good place to peace out. I mean, we've got... We want to conserve as much manpower as possible. Don't want to ruin uh, Austria and Hungary's manpower since they're likely to ruin it. And uh, same people in the coalition, so I don't really care. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, take this peace deal. So, the Byzantine Conquest of Hamid. 140,000 of our alliance died. And uh, almost nearly as many of the Middle Easterners died as well, so I'm pretty happy about that. We have inspiring victory. Hooray! We had a, I forgot we had a mission to take that province. I always forget to check missions after I get back from, like, a... Like, start a new recording session, but Mamhar Recovery Speed, Yearly Prestige, much welcome. Much welcome. Let's see, if we could take a mission to save the Greek people in Corfu, which I should have done. Um, could we attack Venice? I mean, their allies are still pretty crap. And with all this new land we just got, I mean... You know, that's, that's confidence boosting in and of itself. Uh, let's go ahead and manage our overextension first. Um, so we can't quite get early mo modern administration. However, once we pick this up, I definitely want to switch to an administrative monarchy as soon as possible. Um, just, it's so good. Like, you get uh, more production efficiency and national tax modifier, um, which is just awesome, I think. For a government type, for sure. Now, let's see. Finances are doing pretty well. I think we can actually uh, pay back this loan, which is pretty awesome. Um, now that we've taken, you know, this land, we can mothball our forts again. Good stuff. And now, unfortunately, we have a 14-year truce. Which sucks. Uh, which means, honestly, I am going to take the mission to save the Greek people in Corfu because uh, I don't want to wait that long to start another war. Oh, knights, why do you have to be outraged? You could be my vassal. Tisk tisk. Very well. Let's go uh, sit in our new land. And I'm pretty sure... Yeah, Jandar is actually pretty happy with us at the moment for giving him some more land. Let's see, how old is our Inquisitor? Our Inquisitor is currently 54 years old. I'm glad we didn't fire him because uh, he's going to be instrumental in converting these new uh, Sunni provinces we just took, I think. But let's go ahead and pick up uh, early modern administration. And then once we hit 100 uh, admin points, we'll uh, get what we want. Right, the Mamluks have the gall to claim Madonna as their own. Bastards. Serbia wants to become a march. Serbia is sad. We get the idea. My goodness. The borders here. I, I sense an impending conflict between these two countries. However, they're both still at military tech 10. Tech 10? We're at 12. That's crazy. Is Muscovy still like a colonial nation or something? Or sorry, not a colonial. Has he has he even embraced? Oh my goodness, Muscovy hasn't even embraced colonialism yet. Wow. Barely any of his provinces have that. And now that the printing press is live, um. Oh hey, so weirdly enough, we got seven percent progress in Constantinople for the printing press, but it doesn't appear to be ticking up every month. Oh no, it's going up by 0.2 every month. Why is it doing that? Why is it doing that? I want to know. European 20 development uh, capital. 0.13 per month. Or 0.2% each month. Uh, doesn't look like... Or capital of country with Diplotech 15 would be another uh, thing to help, but... We may consider developing Constantinople here to help the printing press spread faster. Uh, I'm happy that it's spreading automatically on its own. Uh, Muscovy is also getting it as well. However, because of that 50% uh, tech malice and the new ticking one from the printing press, um, they're going to be really behind on tech. And so as a major power, they're probably going to be less threatening than we would actually like think that they would be. 
Now, one thing we really, 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 really want to do is pick up this alliance with France since they're offering, basically. Uh, but to do that, we need to get um, we need to get the diplomatic relations from influence ideas. Let's see. That being said, uh, where else can we convert? Or uh, I want. I wish we could convert them by fabricating a claim, but. Yeah, we're going to fabricate more claims on the Mamluks, even though we have a crazy long truce with them now. Karaman has lost his alliance, so, I mean, it's, it's just another war. Uh, he has lost the coalition status, because uh, we defeated them. And I don't think they can join another one until, um, you know, circumstances change. So, we're going to fabricate a claim on him again. And then, once the next... I mean, we've already got a claim on him. Uh, when does that one expire? When does the one on Konya expire? 1557. So, yeah, we definitely want to fabricate a new claim on them uh, for the next time that we can actually declare war on them, which will be a while from now, but um, Iraq seems to be doing pretty well over here. Uh, could be a potential ally, actually. He's he's friendly towards us. Um, his tech is pretty garbage, but... I mean, that happens. Like, everyone around us just seems to have really crappy admin tech for some reason. <laughs> They're not even expanding that much. Like, like we've taken all this land and cored all this new land... And yet, our administrative tech is, like, on time. We haven't even uh, put in administrative focus, either, so... Oh, Muscovy has internal conflicts. That's brutal. Brutal. But, wow, what a ride. We're uh, poised to destroy the Mamlukian Sultanate, which I'm pretty happy about. Um, mostly because, you know, being able to reclaim these lands is a pretty huge deal. Now, Jandar here, I think he's had a good run. However, I think it's time that we annexed him. We're going to improve relations. We're going to annex him, get all that Sunni land, and start converting it. Unlike Serbia, Jandar's army is kind of small, actually. Hey, Crimea's back from the dead. He took over all of Genoa's land. I don't think Genoa is a sovereign... Oh, Genoa is still a technically sovereign nation, but... Um, let's escalate the complaint with the Crimeans, just because it's funny. The Crimeans are allied with Kazan, but honestly, they're not that threatening. And since that's the case, I'm going to build a spy network and prepare to invade. Um, it's just another great opportunity to, to expand for us. Uh, we will start converting uh, ISIL. Ichel. One of those two. I'll just say every pronunciation that comes to mind every time that something pops up and hope that it's right. That's a good way to do it, right? That way I offend as many people as possible whenever I try to pronounce something. It's wonderful. Alright. Let's change governments to an administrative monarchy. This will change our legitimacy to 69. Which it already is at. Woohoo. Alright, so we'll have 10 production efficiency, 5 national tax modifier, and uh, more monthly autonomy change, too. It's pretty great. Uh, let's see how much more money we're making every month as a result of this. I imagine it'll be quite a bit. So we've got like 2.05... 2. .05, 2. Uh, only 0.5, really? Maybe it's something else, right? Because, I mean, 5% taxes, 10% production, like... Come on. Surely it's not that little. Oh well. The autonomy change is worth it um, on its own just for the sheer number of provinces we have. Uh, Burgundy tells us of the Netherlands declaring independence. We have a liturgical reform. We could gain legitimacy and lose patriarch authority. Which we're currently at 30%. Or we could just gain uh, patriarch authority. I mean, Alexios here is age 45. He's kind of old. Um... And legitimacy is going up by one every year, so I mean, uh, it would help with unrest and diplomatic reputation, but now that we've got influence ideas, that's like less of a concern. So let's get the Patriarch Authority since that lasts, like, basically forever, or until we decide, you know, to lose it intentionally. Let's see, we could, uh, kind of, we could turn the Aleppo area into a uh, state. I think we're going to do that just, like, immediately. Let's see. Uh, are one of these provinces not done coring yet? Oh no, it's just that the other one's uh, being converted by a missionary. I mean, oh, oh no, we didn't have the points for it. Never mind. Okay, well, we're going to go ahead and core that as well. 
And our force limit is now up to 46. Gets better every day, doesn't it? And, uh, oh, hey, we will, uh, rather than teching up, even though our Navy did a great job in that, in that war, uh, we're gonna go ahead and pick up, uh, the diplomatic relations slot. And we're gonna ally France, since they offered. Although a lot of our, um, diplomats are busy at the moment, so hold on. Let's fabricate on Karaman. And, uh, stop building a spy network. Wait four days for our uh, diplomat to get back, and France! What a good what a good friend you're about to be. We have allied France, and he wants to marry us, sure. This will definitely help insulate us against the Castilians, which is kind of the uh, main purpose of it. Um, unfortunately, I don't really think there's a way for us to just straight up attack the Castilians, um, which we would love to do just to get Rome back. Uh, but otherwise, we could probably beat the tar out of the, the Venetians with you know the aid of the French, and uh, not really feel bad about it at all. So, I mean, we've just opened up a ton of new avenues of expansion, um, and I'm pretty excited about that. So, thank you for joining me, my fellow Romans, and I'll see you guys on the next one.